decided to attend Pokemon Go Fest for the very first time, mainly because it was being held worldwide in a, you know, remote setting you could play from literally anywhere in the world. While I personally had a very fun time throughout Go Fest this year, during and after the weekend in the event, I read a lot of comments and threads on Pokemon's Reddit community page, The Silf Road. Overall, the reception and the experiences of other players throughout GoFest this year was incredibly mixed. A lot of people had a lot of negative things to say about GoFest this year, and yet there were also a lot of people that had a lot of positive things to say. So which ones are telling the truth? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than one side is right and one side is wrong. But if you're a player who chose to not go to this year's GoFest, but are curious about next year's GoFest and might want to try it out if it's in the same remote format, you probably want a clear cut answer to the question, was 2020 GoFest worth the $15? Well, being that I myself participated in this year's event and took a significant amount of time to study the complaints and compliments of the event online, I figured I'd compile all the major threads and comments that I could find from the community on the Silf Road Reddit page to paint as clear of a picture as possible of what GoFest was actually like this year. So let's answer the question. Was Pokemon 2020 GoFest worth the $15 price of admission? And here we go. So we're gonna take a look at some of the threads, some of the comments from the Silf Road about 2020 GoFest. And I'm gonna talk about my personal experiences with GoFest um, and what I think about some of the community's feedback and their opinions. So the first one was one called GoFest felt like an incense day. This is what they said. Instead of an actual event with tons of spawns, it felt like just sitting around waiting for the minute to pass for the incense to refresh. Uh, only good Pokemon like Marowak, Litwick, Unknowns, Heatmore, etc. were only spawning from incense instead of all over the place like they would have been at a normal Go Fest. Not to mention the majority of the spawns were common shiny Pokemon that have been featured countless times and even the shiny rate was terrible. Okay, so um, basically the complaint here was that, and I, I kind of understand this, was that Go Fest felt like an incense day. I will say that was true on day two. On day two, the, the common spawns without incense absolutely sucked. I got tired of checking Quillfish, Carvana, Swablu, freaking Metatite for Shiny. I don't want those Pokemon. I want interesting ones. Like, this person mentions that they were getting Pokemon like Vulpix and Slowpoke. I, personally, I've never... Well, I've evolved Vulpix, but Vulpix is like one of my favorite Pokemon. Vulpix is just adorable. I love Vulpix. Growlithe is another one of my favorite Pokemon. I barely saw any, I, I would see more Vulpix on like a regular day just playing outside of GoFest. I didn't see a single one on day two. Day one, I saw Vulpix. I also saw Growlithe on day one. I didn't see a single Growlithe on day two, except for like a Shadow Growlithe on a Team Rocket stop. So I agree that day two was an incense day. If you didn't have incense on day two, you were gonna be catching shitty Pokemon all day unless you got like a Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur. But what I will say about day one is, while a lot of people thought day two was a lot more relaxed, day one at least varied up the Pokemon being seen. I saw so many Pokemon that I like never ever see on a regular day of playing Pokemon Go. And that was amazing, just because the battle like the, um, the battle hours, they had their own Pokemon, the fire had their own, the water had their own. There was a much bigger variety that you got on day one than on day two. This next thread is titled, Dairamaka and Litwick absolutely carried the fire habitat. Day one could have been better if the other habitats had a similar dream team. I'm not gonna read the thread, but basically the complaint is here, and this is echoed a lot in some of the comments, was that the water and leaf habitats were, um, <laughs> I thought I heard something behind me, sorry. The water and leaf habitats were underwhelming. And I agree. Uh, for water, the only cool thing was is that I caught a lot of Blastoise and I caught a lot of Mudkip, so I don't see a lot of, so I was able to evolve Mudkip. Um, but in general, other than like Mudkip and Squirtle and maybe Bulbasaur, those two habitats were bad, at least in the fire. You got Litwick, who you never see, Darumaka I've never seen, Heatmore I've never seen. Um, 
and just a lot of cool fire Pokemon that I haven't caught a lot of. Now, I just, I think fire Pokemon are cool. Like I said, I love Growlithe, I love Vulpix, both are fire. So for me, fire, there was no way that you could have disappointed me. But I agree, the other habitats were honestly, compared to fire, didn't hold up. Now we get to the negative uh, reviews. This is a thread called Do Not Buy a GoFest Ticket, a gameplay review. So this person says, I, like many other people, came in to GoFest with high expectations, collect a few shinies, pick up some candy for meta-relevant Pokemon, see some new Pokemon. Unfortunately for me, GoFest failed to deliver on every expectation. This is fine. Obviously, GoFest isn't going to be amazing for everybody, but let's see what they say. Shiny rate. The day started off promising, catching my first shiny Chansey at 1010, held them in high spirits. However, hours passed with no further shinies. Morale was drained with them and the players around them. And after three hours of play, a lot of players were shiny list. And after nine and a half hours of constant play, they saw their second shiny, which is a Sky Armory. They caught two shinies from 832 catches. Many more were shiny checked. Um, there's a, most of the complaints were shiny related. People were complaining about the rate of shinies. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna talk more about that when we get to the comments, but yeah, that was a big complaint. So gameplay, gameplay was very basic and limited. There was only one special research task which completed itself through normal gameplay and did not require any effort. What? Didn't require any effort? What is the point of going to GoFest if you're gonna have shit just handed to you? See, this is a big thing is like, I understand being unhappy with certain things, like, which I'll get to later, uh, but saying that stuff wasn't handed to you is is just, what? Why? Like, why, why would you even complain about that? That's like, you have to work to get stuff. That's why they're called challenges. That's why they're called special research tasks, because you have to go out of your way to play the game and explore the aspects of the game to complete these things to get rewards. If every single thing is just like, oh, catch like 50 Pokemon and you get five raid passes, that's, that's not fun. There were no special field research tasks. That means the only difference between normal gameplay and GoFest was that we had rotating spawn pools and small bonuses. But wasn't there special research tasks? Because you had the challenges in game, and then you had like certain things you could do, like you had to send a certain amount of gifts on. And then on day two, there were special field research tasks, which gave you the Shadow Mewtwo, the Shadow Articuno, the Shadow Zapdos, and the Shadow um, Moltres. Unless I'm getting this confused with something else, I think that's what they're talking about. But there was challenges and unique things if you bought a ticket, like to get rewards with research. Most Pokemon had been featured in events previously or were normal non-event spawns. Even the featured prize Pokemon is part of the special research test for Pokemon which were spawning in the wild in 2016. The only desirable Pokemon which hadn't been previously featured in an event was Gibble, of which across 10 hours of gameplay only spawned seven times and with another two from raids. For me, GoFest felt like regular non-event gameplay. So here's one thing I will say when I found out what non-ticket holders got, they got the same spawns and the same raids as ticket holders did. So if you weren't um, doing GoFest for like shinies, if you weren't doing it for like the special event Pokemon, then there really wasn't a point of getting a ticket. But what I will say is that getting a ticket allowed you access to like the chat, the special challenges, to some of the special re- because there was, I, I do believe there was special research, unless on day two, the regular players got the same special research tasks as I did. I, I personally didn't do like a test of like a non-ticket holder versus a ticket holder, but there were some people that commented that did, and I'll get to that later. But to wrap up this thread, I, I will, to all of these people that say, oh, don't buy a GoFest ticket, such a waste of money. What I'll say is that a lot of these people, I feel like, have played the game hardcore. Like they, they're hardcore players. Maybe they've been to GoFests in the past. Um, did this person say that, this person did not mention if they had been to previous GoFests. I don't know if they're a hardcore player. It, it sounds like it, but just because you didn't have a good time doesn't mean you should be discouraging other people from buying a ticket. It's very clear that a lot of people, including myself, had fun during GoFest. A lot of people had a good time. So I think that in general, we have to just stop telling 
the people that had a bad experience that they're wrong and telling the people that had a good experience that they're wrong. It was a very mixed event. So here's another thread that uh, talks about shinies, which was briefly referenced in the last thread in that post. This one's called enough shinies to be worth your money is a poor metric for judging these events. In general, I agree. This thread is about the metric we seem to be using to judge whether GoFest is good or bad. As I look at all the reviews of GoFest so far, I see so many people saying $15, but I got no shinings or $15 worth it. I got so many shinies. If we're happy or sad about the event based on the number of shinies we got, we're admitting that we're all okay with the idea of paying for shinies rather than obtaining them through enjoyable gameplay. I'm not gonna make the same exact point this person's making because they go to say that if you wanna pay for an event just to get shinies, why not just pay for an account that has a lot of shinies? The thing is, is that what you have to understand is shiny Pokemon are completely based on RNG. They're randomly generated. You know, just because there's a certain shiny rate does not guarantee you get a lot of shiny Pokemon. Throughout two days of GoFest, I got seven shinies and the people that I played with, which by the way, they had auto catching devices. So they were catching more than I was. They got uh, probably around 10 or 12 shinies each between them. Normally on a regular day of playing, I don't get any shinies and I got seven between two days. So yeah, there was a boosted shiny rate. It's not like they didn't boost the shiny rate. However, people are saying that it feels compared to previous go fests, the shiny rate was lower. But what this thread points out that I do like to highlight on is it's not just about shinies. Like if you paid $15 to catch shiny Pokemon, maybe this wasn't the event for you, but it was more about, you know, the experiences that we had in quarantine because you, unless you played at home, you got to go out. You know, I had a mask on the whole time. So I was able to go out throughout New York City, see areas of New York City I've never seen before, um, see other people playing the game again. You know, you felt like you were part of the community again. It was like a big thing about the Pokemon community. And we got raids that we never got in um, GoFest before because it was apparently, from what I've heard, is it was so laggy in the past they didn't have raids. There was a lot of interesting features implemented into this uh, GoFest and maybe even some that weren't as impressive, but it was different and it was all across the world you could play and everyone could share their stories about it. So I think that there's a whole lot more depth than just, oh, I didn't get 20 shinies, so I'm unhappy. This next thread I feel like is important to cover. It was titled, A Thank You to Niantic. Um, because there was a lot of negative comments, so this thread kind of addressed some of the things that kind of have been changed by Niantic in their opinion. So I'm gonna read it. After finishing GoFest today, I saw a lot of negative comments and it made me wanna post something thanking Niantic for all they do for the community. Because we have to be honest, they do a lot for the community. They do. Maybe it's not always perfect, but Still, there's a lot of stuff that have been done for the community. They say back in 2016, Niantic was awful at communicating with its fan base. No Instagram posts or tweets, just radio silence for months. Today, we have things like virtual team lounges and live news system integrated into the game. When COVID began, Niantic began working on ways to not only help the game survive, but to find ways to make it an even more enjoyable game for all throughout and after the pandemic ends. Little things like this are what make me love the game so much. Niantic has time and time again showed us that they aren't just trying to take our money like so many other game companies are, but they truly care about the communities that they built and the fans they've gained. This is kind of true. Like, here's what I will say is, there's a lot of bugs and glitches in the game that I've experienced and others have experienced. But when I think about other games that I've played, they don't have community days. They don't have days where, you know, they pick a Pokemon and feature that Pokemon specifically for that day. They don't have, you know, go fests or festivals. Um, they don't have certain rewards and stuff built into the game that happens every week. They don't have new things coming in all the time. You know, this app has evolved so much since it's began and is it's continuing to grow. And yes, it has issues. When you have people all across the world playing the game at once, millions of people, you're gonna have server issues. It's gonna happen. Now, that doesn't excuse it, but I'm just saying, I don't think any of us should have expected that this was gonna go, GoFest 2020 was gonna go completely perfect, unscathed the entire time. So this was a thread posted before GoFest that I found interesting. Is GoFest 2020 worth it for everyone? 
It's really expensive where I live. I'm quarantined and they didn't make anything clear to me regarding species and other possibilities. I've never been to an official event before, so I don't really know how it works, except that it features rare or uncommon Pokemon to catch, which I don't see clarified right now. And then in the edit, um, from the answers I get that many people don't understand about economy and that other half are more conscious of social and geographic differences. As I said, it's expensive in my country and there are not enough information for me to buy it right now. This is actually a reason I almost didn't buy a ticket to GoFest because while there was certain information offered such as, you know, oh, we're gonna have, you know, uh, virtual lounges and we're gonna have habitats and there's gonna be different hours. Um, up until a few days beforehand, there wasn't even maybe even like the day before or two days before, like really close to Pokemon Go Fest, there wasn't enough information for me to really buy a $15 ticket. You know, I didn't know what Pokemon were gonna be spawning. I didn't know what certain hours exactly meant, like how the habitats would work. I wasn't sure if like habitat meant, oh, certain areas of like, you know, where you are are gonna have like different Pokemon. Like maybe if you walk a mile down the road, you'll find a bunch of electric. Uh, a mile to the right will be a bunch of grass. I didn't know if that's what it was. Up until like right before GoFest, there was a lot of vague things being said. Like we were given information, but we weren't given a lot. And for some people, that wasn't worth the price of a ticket. And that's understandable. Okay, so that's the threads that I personally looked at um, during and after GoFest. Now we're gonna get to some of the comments on these threads that actually have a lot of community feedback. And we're gonna see, you know, the mixed reviews, the positive, the negative. I'm gonna to talk to you about my personal experience and how it aligned with these comments. So these two comments say, sounds like a bunch of FOMO marketing to me. Um, 17 euros to hunt virtual monsters during a limited time frame of 20 hours with barely any information beforehand is not worth it to me. I've had enough of Niantic's stupid FOMO marketing. So this is a thing that Pokemon does a lot is there's the fear of missing out marketing. Essentially what this means, at least in terms of Pokemon Go, is that, you know, they'll say like, oh, show up to community day. If you don't show up to community day and, you know, catch Pokemon all day and get extra space in your bag and have enough raid passes, you're not gonna catch enough of these things to evolve it and get this special move, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially, if you didn't buy a ticket to GoFest, I don't think you were able to get a Shadow Mewtwo, Articuno, Zapdos, or Moltres. Correct me if I'm wrong, non-ticket holders, but I think that was something specific to GoFest. So yeah, I'm seeing a thread on the Silk Road right now that says, unavailable to non-ticket holders was the day one special research and the day two special research. So that thread that said that the special researches um, weren't exclusive to ticket holders was wrong. In fact, so we're clear right now, let's go through the list of stuff that was unavailable to non-ticket holders. So the day one special research and, and the rewards that were included were not available to a non-ticket holder. The day two special research uh, and the Shadow Mewtwo and the Victinis, those were not available to a non-ticket holder. The Rotom snapshots, the unknown G and O spawns with the incense, the Heatmore and Durant spawns with the incense, the Viper and Zangu spawns with the incense. Those were not available to non-ticket holders. Vaporeon, Leafeon, Venusaur, Blastoise, Alolan Grimer, Alolan Executor, Alolan Marowak spawns on day one were not available to non-ticket holders. Um, it says apparently that they were available for non-ticket holders on day two though. And then you had the boosted shiny rates, the three free remote raid passes, the hourly global challenges and bonuses, and the rare candies from gifts during friendship and habitat hours. All of those things were not available to non-ticket holders. So that's exactly what you were paying for. Now, the thing is this information was released right around the time of GoFest. It was either during GoFest or like the day before is when this thread was posted according to the days ago thing. So it's very clear that Niantic was trying to be as vague as possible um, until like right before GoFest. So basically you had a bunch of people buying tickets and then they get exactly what they're gonna get. And some people were gonna be disappointed because of that. But getting back to the FOMO marketing, it's true. This is something Pokemon does. I don't like it because the thing is, is like if you want a shiny Charmander and there was a Charmander day, and maybe you're, you don't have time to play that day. You're just screwed and it's not your fault. 
You can't get the special move that makes Charmander amazing. You can't get the special move that makes Beldum amazing. Literally, if you don't have Meteor Mash on a freaking Metagross, you're, you're screwed. That's it, you're screwed. Like Metagross is just better with Meteor Mash and you could only get Meteor Mash if you evolve Beldum during that freaking community day. I know because I was at that community day. I only have one Metagross with Meteor Mash. So stuff like that is like a little ridiculous. Um, I'm not a fan of it, but that's just me. Now we're gonna cover one of the most complained about things with GoFest, the lack of shinies. So first of all, here's someone who's defending Niantic, I guess. For some people, shinies are not an achievement or something to gloat about. They represent your love for Pokemon and catching them all, or simply the love for a specific Pokemon or shiny. Most people don't battle, but God knows they come out for community day, so they're clearly not there for the special move. And in all fairness, shinies aren't an achievement. They're a random drop and a glorified gotcha that you might have walked more than someone else, but at the end of the day, it was pure random chance. I did the Mareep community day without a single shiny Mareep playing all three hours. My husband reinstalled, opened the game, and got a shiny on his first one. What's there to be proud of when you have little control? Now, this doesn't completely understand the point of the low shinies. People are more aggravated because past go fests had a higher shiny rate, and they were underwhelmed with the shinies they were getting this year. And if you were someone who's been to GoFest two or three times in the past, this is just gonna be disappointing for you. You know, you're just kind of being set up for failure here. Uh, but there was still a boosted shiny count. Some people that got more shinies in the past got less this year. That's just how it is. You know, it's like this person said, it's RNG. There's no skill or effort that goes into getting a shiny. The only real way to boost your chances of getting a shiny is if you get an auto catch device, like a gotcha to wrap around your wrist that catches for you. In my opinion, there's no fun in that. I wanna catch the Pokemon myself. Cause it's more fun to click on a Pokemon and see it pop up as a shiny than to just have something catch a shiny in the background and then you go like, oh, I got a shiny Venonat or something. Here's another comment. I mean, for people who had good RNG, like it sounds like you guys had, it was probably amazing. For people like me who went nearly five hours between shinies, it was disappointing. Niantic has set a precedent with shinies and paid events in the past that this one missed the mark. And aside, I don't think the spirit of GoFest should revolve around shiny check-in. By the way they designed day one, there was little else to do. I don't think that's true at all. There was actually a lot to do on day one. There was the global challenges that, you know, happened throughout the hour. There was the different hours with different themes. Uh, during one hour, the goal should be to catch as many um, heat Pokemon as possible to evolve stuff up that you don't have. Um, look for, sh I mean, shiny checkings is a, is a part of it, but to just click on Pokemon and be like, oh, it's not a shiny. Oh, it's not a shiny. That's annoying and it feels like a chore. During raid hour, there was an incentive to do raiding. So you would do your raiding during that hour. It was extremely structured and there were things to do. I don't know why this person is saying there was little else to do. That's not exactly true. Unless you have every single Pokemon under the sun with 300 candies and everything is evolved, then obviously you're not gonna get much out of GoFest. Although I will say like, there's the new Unnova region, there's there's the new regions, and I didn't see a lot of like Unnova Pokemon or like the one that came before Unnova, I think might've been Hoenn. Yeah, I didn't get a lot of new Pokemon, to be honest. A lot of the Pokemon I actually ended up getting were from the first two regions released. So to base RNG spawns, on how much GoFest was worth it, it's just kind of ridiculous to me. Like, people who got 15 Shinies had a good time, people who got five didn't have as good of a time, but that's the inherent risk that you get going into these events. Not everybody's guaranteed 20 Shinies, but I can understand why you would feel like, you know, it was a waste of your money um, after you paid $15 and got no Shinies, but the thing is, you, you should be doing, you shouldn't spend your whole GoFest just Shiny checking. Catch some Pokemon, do some legendary raids, you know, use those remote raid passes that you hopefully have. Get outside, hatch some of your eggs, you know, just kind of check out some of the freaking Pokemon spawns, you know. Catch, because there was unique stuff if you bought a ticket, which this is the whole point of my video is to respond to people who got tickets. Catch some Darumakas, catch some Zangooses, catch some Snorlaxes, some Blastoise, some Venusaurs. There was stuff to do. There was stuff to do. Here's another one, hope equals gambling. You put your money on red and hope for win. Pokemon should be good entertainment, same amount of goods for the same amount of money. 
or you guys are going to movies slash concerts with a random audience who paid the same money or are escorted out at half time. So this is a fucking horrible, absolutely horrible analogy. Um, no, no, you should not be getting the same amount of goods for the same amount of money. That is not the point of shinies. Again, it's RNG. There's not a prescribed way which a shiny spawns. One person could click on, you know, a Blastoise and it could be shiny. Another person could click on it and it's not. There's no way to give everybody the same equal amount of shinies or a minimum amount if it's randomly generated. So I don't understand the point this person's trying to make and saying like going to movies, concerts when, with people who paid the same money but they're escorted out. That's not, that's not the same thing, you know? You could still have a good time and go fest if you weren't only concerned about catching shinies. If you paid $15 to shiny check, I'm not sure that your money was going into GoFest for the right reasons, I'm sorry. All right, let's move on from the lack of shinies. Um, I had a lot here, but I don't wanna take up too much time on that. The next thing I wanna focus on is the server mismanagement and the lag. The server mismanagement was the greatest failure of the event and a consistent weak point of every Niantic event. That right there is the thing I hated the most. I planned for the friendship event, managed to open up six presents, gave up and spun stops before the next time because I didn't plan on it working and I needed the Pokeballs. Day two, I wanted to raid, but instead did hardly any. Wanted to invite others to my raid, but the app would crash when I tried. Booted out of raids, so frustrating. I agree with this completely. If you went to GoFest, and you had a horrible time with lag, I can relate to you. I lost three raid passes because when I finished a raid, what would happen is like the, the boss would get down to zero health, but the timer would keep going and the Pokemon would be caught in their animations, just bobbing around. Nothing would happen because the raid crashed. So I had to close out of the app and go back in. But the problem was is that the freaking raid timer went to zero and the raid stopped, you know, being available. So I wasn't allowed to have my rewards. That's right, I lost three raid passes because of this. So this is just a valid point. This is something that clearly happened to me. It happened to multiple other people. Freaking annoying. I wish it didn't happen. This is this has always happened to me with Niantic. Even during community days, I'll get fucked out of a raid. You'd think at this point that it would be fixed and it hasn't. So I will say that it is true, Pokemon Go has a lot of problems with glitching and crashing um, that's always persisted throughout the game. It especially showed during this Go Fest. For me, playing in New York City, I will say that mo like probably 90% of the time the game was fine. The only issues I had were in um, day one during the friendship hour that this person mentioned. From 11.30 to about 12.10, 12.15, the game was absolutely unplayable. But I mean, I guess it was, I, it got fixed quicker for me than it did for the people in Australia. Yeah, I lost a remote raid pass because the game bugged after f defeating a Diagola and couldn't do a thing but force close the game. And after reopening it, the raid was already gone. Contacted support via in-game help chat and options yesterday and I got my remote raid pass back. I got really pissed during the weekend and the GoFest overall since that was my only chance of doing a raid. But in the end, I got back what I lost. Cheers for the support team, they're really helpful. Wow, this makes me actually feel like an idiot for not contacting support uh, because I had my raid passes lost. For me, I assume that since so many people were having the same issues that I wouldn't be compensated. And it is clear based on these feed the feedback I've seen, some people had their stuff compensated, some people didn't. Some people had an amazing uh, experience dealing with support. Some people had a terrible you know, experience dealing with support and got like blanket copy paste replies. But yeah, I did not reap the benefits from two legendary raids on day one and a Giratina raid on day two. I was not able to catch a Giratina. Was not very happy about that, but um, yeah, I don't know. This stuff happens. The only saving grace was if you came back into the game after you force closed it and the raid was still up, had like five minutes left to like still do the raid. You could go in and still get your rewards. That was a good thing. And you could catch, still have a chance at catching the legendary, um, but doesn't excuse the fact that it was glitchy. So here's another comment I felt was important to highlight. This person says, here's the thing. There are too many different kinds of players in this game. The hardcore players. Every single common spawn today was something I already had all the shinies for minus Krogunk. Other than Krogunk, the only Pokemon I needed shiny wise was a Marowak. 
which was locked behind incense for two hours, Heat more, which was locked behind incense for two hours, Durant, locked behind incense for two hours, Seviper, locked behind incense for two hours, and Gibble, far too rare to have been used as hype leverage for getting a shiny one. For a hardcore player, there was nothing worthwhile here, and we basically paid to sit in one spot and farm incense. It was boring and frustrating to be limited in spawns when it's the number of spawns you can encounter that dictate how many shinies you can find. So a whack and the regionals being locked behind incense was basically a soft lock on finding shinies during a paid event, which is just plain wrong to do. Yeah, I mean, the locked behind incense thing, I agree, was annoying. Uh, the only, like, on, at least on day two. I think, I think on day one, I was seeing Zangooses at some point in the wild. I might be, that might not be true because I had incense going all day, so there's no way to really tell. But um, I was finding Gibbles, not incense related. But I will say, yeah, a lot of the unique, interesting Pokemon that spawned were through my incense. The common spawns, not through the incense. A lot of them were lame, mainly on day two. The day two ones were lame. So then they list three types of casuals. Casuals, the players that weren't able to go out and could only play from incense. They therefore had limited spawns and would have a lower shiny count and be disappointed unless they got abnormally lucky. That's assuming that that kind of person would care about shinies. I am not a hardcore player. I play for fun. I play to catch them all and evolve and get awesome looking Pokemon that I can use for fun. Like people will say stuff like, oh, Growlithe isn't the meta, so I don't use Growlithe or Volpix is, I already have so many of those and they're not even good in the PVP meta, so I didn't use them. I use the Pokemon because I like them. And again, I didn't care that much about shiny raids. I was mostly interested in the legendary raids. Uh, possibly, I mean, maybe you could get a shiny during the legendary raids, that's kind of cool. I was interested in the global events and like the special research you could do with a ticket. And I was also interested in the new Pokemon that you could get an abundance of with a ticket. Casual, able to go out, but don't live somewhere conductive to large spawn cluster and higher spawn density. So while they may have played all 10 hours, they were only seeing 50 to 100 Pokemon an hour and thus got few shinies. Okay, so it's clear that this person is basing a good experience of GoFest on shinies. Now, I don't know the past GoFests because I've never been to them, but were past GoFests just only marketed for just shinies because it seems like all anyone cared about was shinies for this go fest. And I don't know, for me, it's like, dude, if you really wanted to get certain shinies, just trade for them at that point. Why spend $15 to have a chance at getting the shinies you want, but you're not guaranteed to get. And the last casual hasn't been able to get out during previous events for the trash that were the common spawns for go fest 2020. So literally everything spawning was great. I guess for me personally, I was the latter two of the casuals. I don't live in an area that has a lot of clusters. So I went to the city where there were more clusters and I haven't been to previous events, but I will say that the common spawns for me were still pretty bad. I was disappointed by the common spawns on day two. On day one, however, I was able to get some sky armories. I was able to get, you know, a lot of Pokemon that I'd never got an abundance of playing the game where I live. This person also says, yes, from certain kinds of players, this was a huge bait and switch by Niantic, basically no way to get enough Gibble to get some shinies and new regional shinies locked behind incense, ETC. The free players basically got what I did minus incense stuff and that's ridiculous. So yeah, I'm glad the folks who enjoyed it enjoyed it, but this was a pretty bad execution of this kind of event. Again, this is just somebody who came in to GoFest with a certain expectation and didn't get what they expected. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it really was just a hit or miss thing. It depends what kind of player you are, what you valued. If your value of GoFest is how many shiny Pokemon I can get, and you didn't get that many this year, it's RNG, man. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. It's randomized, but I, 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 I do think this person did make some good points. Like the fact that a lot of stuff was locked behind incense for certain amounts of times. That felt kind of ridiculous because if I'm trying to do like a raid, I'm not going to be popping incense. If I'm trying to um, do other things that don't involve catching Pokemon, like the Team Rocket stuff, I'm not popping incense to waste it. It really was just a headache for me if I didn't have an auto catch, to be honest. But again, Shinies were not the only thing that was part of this event. 
the value of GoFest should not 100% be focused on shinies. But if you went into GoFest um, to look for shinies, I, I guess, yeah, it, it's probably a bad experience for you. Next thing I wanna talk about, I've already kind of mentioned this, is the customer support thing. That one person said that they had a great time with customer support. Let's see some negative things. I was in one of the first time zones. I contacted them about multiple lost raid passes on Saturday morning and they didn't get back to me until 8 p.m. on Sunday local time. I couldn't even buy more raid passes for the lost one since I've also been able to buy coins for days and their response is, we are, uh, we are aware this is an issue. They also refused to refund my Safari Zone tickets for months now, which was over $40 purchase. I think Niantic does some cool stuff, but their support is still busted. Other companies do it far better in other games I play. They automate systems to fix problems without needing to contact them, ETC. I wouldn't say Niantic support is good because of a reimbursed lost raid pass. That's cake for them to do. It's all the other issues and problems where they suck. Wasn't able to PVP for two weeks as they wouldn't let me turn in the rewards and constantly just got cookie cutter copy pasta replies like reinstall, check your connection, etc. So yeah, it's very clear that it's, it was really hit or miss for people in contacting support. So I can comment this based on my experiences with GoFest as well. Last thing I want to talk about is which day was better, two or one? This person says, this is a weird point of view, but I like the second day much more than the first. If I were to go back in time, I would only play three or four hours during the first day using incense on fire hours mostly, and play six to eight hours during the second day, being out and fighting rocket grunts as much as I can. So quite a bit of people um, share the sentiment of second day was better. Some other people said second day was less structured, so they weren't as stressed out. I personally disagree, even though I think that the water and leaf habitats were less impressive than fire. I definitely think there was more offered on day one, even though there was like lag and connection issues. Connection issues and crashes and lag and bugs were much less on day two, but I was much more happy with the Pokemon I caught on day one than I was with day two. On day two, once I finished the Team Rocket special researches and, you know, finished off all my raid passes, there was really nothing more for me to do, um, except for maybe catch a couple more Shadow Pokemon. But really what I was looking for was like a Shadow Growlithe. And I didn't find basically any. I think I got one all day. Again, like obviously different people set different goals during GoFest. Some people were like, I'm gonna catch a ton of shinies. Some people were like, I've never seen a lot of Growliths before. He's my favorite Pokemon. I'm gonna catch a hundred Growliths or 50 Growliths or whatever. But basing off of whether you achieved your personal goals going into GoFest, I don't think that's a very fair way of interpreting whether or not it was worth the 15 bucks. Instead, we have to look at what was offered. You know, what were you paying for? What extra stuff did you get paying for a ticket that normal players did not get. So to close off this video, I hope it's not too long. I try to go really in depth with this one and or just organize all the community posts that I saw, see like, you know, uh, what was complained about, what was said that was good. In conclusion, I think the reason I made this video was to point out that it's not as black and white as, oh, GoFest wasn't worth it, don't waste your money, and GoFest was amazing, you know, what a great deal, I had so much fun. E either point was okay to have, you know, if you went in with a certain goal and you didn't meet that goal, of course you're gonna be a little disappointed, but if you went in for the sense of adventure to go out around the world, explore new places, um, catch a lot of Pokemon that you haven't seen a lot, then you had a good time, that doesn't, but both of those points of view do not invalidate the other. That being said, I personally do not think it's fair to say that it's a waste of money because you didn't have a good time. I think $15 as a price point for the amount of fun me and a lot of other people had was a fair price. I think it was worth it to get a ticket simply for the exclusive stuff you could experience over those two days that non-ticket holders couldn't. For example, if I didn't buy a ticket and I went with my friends um, to New York City, I would have been, you know, jealous that they got a lot of the incense spawns. I would have been jealous that they got the Shadow Mewtwo, all the Shadow Legendaries, and I would have wanted to get the Great Balls and the remote raid passes and some of the candies that you got by doing the research tasks featured through the ticket. In general, if you went into GoFest 2020 with the only the goal to catch shinies, you were generally disappointed. 
But also, if you played like a madman through all of GoFest and played every hour and got five shinies, I understand why you would be upset. I think you being upset is a valid thing. I played every hour of GoFest for both days and only got seven shinies. I don't really care that much about shinies, but if I did, I think I would be a little bit disappointed. I think if I cared about shinies, I still would've had fun, but in the shiny department, I would've been disappointed. I think in conclusion, we can say that um, GoFest was both a good and bad experience. There were good parts, there were bad parts, but I think overall, this is a very cool way to do GoFest during a time where you know, we can't have big crowds of people and some people have to play from home because of the pandemic. This is a really good way to do it. And I think buying a ticket was worth the money. If you had a bad experience, I'm sorry. If, I'm ha if you had a good experience, it's good for you. But I think in general, this was a very positive event. If a GoFest came back with this format where you could play worldwide, but it was more stable and didn't have any crashing or lag. And the uh, both days were kind of more balanced with like getting unique Pokemon. I think I would buy a ticket again. Thank you so much for watching this video and sticking with me. I know it was a little long, so I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.